right now via Skype. We're going to be joined by Rena Vanzo. I hope I'm saying that right. And we ha still have here in the studio with us Dr. Jonathan Tarbox. So I've got two great minds here to talk with us about uh, some really important information for parents. But Rena, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. So thrilled to have you here. And I I'd like to start with you work for Lineagen. Please tell us what you do there and tell us a little bit about what Lineagen does. Great. So Lineagen is a company based in Salt Lake City, Utah, and our mission is to help accelerate diagnostic testing, specifically genetic testing, for children who have a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. So we like for families and doctors to have access to really important genetic tests that may help guide a child's medical management. Okay, great. And and. I understand that your or your lineage in and the Center for Autism and Related Disorders have come together to create uh, some new research. Is that? Well, yeah, it, what, what it is is a clinical partnership. Okay. Um, and basically what we've always been wanting to do at CARD is, uh, and with skills in particular, is mm -hmm. to put the largest amount of information on autism spectrum disorders in one place in the world. And so what our philosophy has always been is we're going to be able to understand autism spectrum disorders the best if we collect the largest amount of data on every single thing imaginable, put it all in one place, and that is going to just open up opportunities in the future. That's going to be able to, that's going to allow us to improve ABA treatment, improve the skills system. It's going to allow medical doctors and geneticists to understand autism better and how people with autism learn better. Basically, it's just the, 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 the essential assumption that we need a lot of data. We need okay. all the data we can get to understand autism because it's a very, very complex topic. So what we've done with Lineagen is put together a partnership where basically it's a data sharing agreement. And so we're going to get uh, genetic data from the genetic testing that they do, which is top of the line uh, genetic testing. And we're going to have the skills data, which tells us about um, child characteristics and learning rate and, um, you know, basically child profiles in terms of behavior and learning. Um, and we'll have all of that, all of those data in the same place at the same time. So uh, with, you know, with um, um, family permission, of course, if they right. give us permission, then we'll be sharing these data back and forth. So it's each, it's each family member's um, personal choice as to okay. whether or not they would want to participate in something like this. Right. But if they do, we believe it's going to be contributing to our ability to um, basically solve the autism puzzle. Which uh, we're all looking forward to and want to be a part of. But you mentioned that it is completely, you have the option to opt in or not, and I, I would imagine that your information is kept incredibly impeccably private. Of course, yeah, absolutely. And so the folks at Lineagen and of course us here at CARD, we have absolutely top, uh, top of the line security uh, for all data, and um, all data that were, are used for any purpose uh, are de-identified, and there's no uh, possibility for anyone's personal information to get leaked or to be used for any inappropriate purpose or anything like that. Uh, Okay, great. And so my question is, I am an autism parent, and I am very interested in being involved in helping to progress things along. Is there also a benefit for, benefit for me as a parent, um, Rena, in, in having this genetic testing done? Is it going to help me with my son? And how would it help me? Absolutely. Um, what we know about genetics and autism is that many children who have a clinical diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder have an underlying genetic condition. Um, some common conditions that many families may have heard about include fragile X syndrome, 22Q deletion syndrome. Those are just two of many examples. And Rena, they were just showing a picture of the 22 deletion uh, with two children and showing some chromosomes. Um, I, I have never heard of this before, and I consider myself a, a fairly educated person, um, but I'd never heard about this before. And so getting this kind of test Testing will, will give me a better understanding of, of what my child's genetics are and how it's influencing their autism? Right. And, and, you know, even though you are a parent who knows a lot about autism, you work in this field, you know, there's so many pieces, as Jonathan mentioned, to this puzzle. And yeah. I think 
only in recent years has that genetics piece been um, given more attention. And that's part of the purpose behind the lineage and card partnership is to get this information, this very important information out to all of the families. And so I'd like to tell you a little bit more about how this information can help. I would love that. If a child um, has a clinical diagnosis of autism and we later learn that can be attributed to a chromosome variation, this 22Q deletion syndrome, for example, we're going to have many other opportunities available to us as a family and as the medical providers who work with that child. If we know that a child has 22Q deletion syndrome, what I can do as a healthcare provider is look in the medical literature and say, okay, what do we know about kids with this deletion? What sort of medical problems are a higher risk for that child? It doesn't mean they're certainly going to happen, but it gives us the ability to look down the road and to be on on awareness for some of those features. Um, For example, there are some heart defects that can be more common in children with a chromosome deletion syndrome. Seizures may be something that could come up down the road for a child with a chromosome deletion. So if we know what some of the specific specifics are based on a child's genetic condition, we can um, treat and possibly even prevent them from happening in the first place. So that's one really important uh, reason or benefit that comes with having a genetic diagnosis, the ability to guide a child's medical management. Another thing that may be important for families, um, I'm sure you know this, I've heard this a thousand times, no two children with autism are the same. You know, children may have skills in one area and their challenges may be in a different area and it could be exactly the opposite for another child. And so if we know what the child's underlying genetic diagnosis is, we may be able to talk with parents, be involved in a subset of a support group where I know you've walked a mile in my shoes. You know, we both have a child with this condition and and where do we go from here? So we might be able to learn more from another parent whose child has the exact same genetic condition. And then another reason why it could be helpful, some parents want to know what is the chance for me to have a second child or even a grandchild with autism. And unless there's a genetic diagnosis for a child, we give very... um, just an estimate of a number. If if you were to tell me, Shannon, I have one child with autism, um, only one child in the family, what is my likelihood of having a second child with autism? I would say it's somewhere between 5 and 20 percent, but the specifics are going to be based on um, a number of things that we may not know. However, if we know that a child has autism and an underlying genetic diagnosis of fragile X syndrome, I can tell that family their chance to have another child is up to 50%. Or if a family has a child with Angelman syndrome, I can let them know that their chance to have a second child with that condition is less than 1%. So we can really personalize that. And for some families, that's, that's important. For others, it's not as important. Yeah, and I would think too, you know, I can already hear parents saying, well, I don't want to know that, I don't want to know that, because we just want to have another child. But stop and consider that, okay, you have another child and you want them whether they're going to have autism or not. But if you know that you need to be looking for things that much earlier, we know how important early intervention is, you're just going to look for those things earlier and be able to help that child earlier. Um, Just want to make sure that everybody is on the same page there. Now, Rena, I know on all the flyers that we've been talking about, there's been something called a CMA, a chromosomal yeah. microarray analysis. Explain to me what that is. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. So the chromosomal microarray analysis is actually considered by the American College of Medical Genetics the most important test, the first tier test for children with a clinical diagnosis of autism. And and chromosome microarray analysis, what that does is it looks at a child's chromosomes. We all should have 46 total chromosomes. They come in pairs, one of each pair from mom and one from dad. And we know that having any missing chromosomes, extra chromosomes, 
or missing pieces or extra pieces of chromosomes could lead to a variety of developmental and medical challenges depending upon the specific chromosome content. So if someone has a CMA done, we're able to tell that family whether that child has any um, adjustments missing or extra pieces to their chromosomes. Okay, really fascinating. And I, I want to talk about the, the financial end of this in just a second, but I'm wondering, do you have statistics about how often when you do this, do you see a, a genetic component? Yeah, that's a great question, Shannon. In general, when the CMA is done for a child with autism, there's about a 15 to 20 percent chance that we're going to identify a change in that child's chromosomes. Wow. We also know that if the child has additional medical features in addition to autism, maybe a child has autism as well as seizures and was also born with a heart defect, that's probably going to be higher than the 15 to 20 percent average number. Okay, really important information. This is really remarkable. So let's talk about the financial component of it because it comes okay. down to that a lot in sure. the autism community. Um, is this something that is going to, uh, what's the cost going to be and is insurance covering this kind of thing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, insurance companies are increasingly covering this test. Um, as I mentioned before, it's only been in the past few years that genetics and autism, you know, the awareness is really there. And, and that awareness is driven in part by a lot of studies and publications that have come out in peer-reviewed medical literature. And because these publications are mounting up, the stack is becoming higher and higher, doctors are able to go to insurance companies and say, look at all of this evidence, look at what this chromosome microarray could do for a child. It's important to have this test covered. Of course, every insurance company is going to be different and we may not um, know if they're going to cover it or not, but the trend is that they're starting to cover it. Um, as far as cost goes, there are a number of laboratories that provide CMA testing. I'm, of course, most familiar with my my own company, Lineagen, and the really great thing that we do is we take the guesswork out of it. We contact the family's insurer before the testing is even done, and that way we know exactly what we're talking about. We're able to give the family very open um, information before they even decide the test. So we're able to tell families up front what their out-of-pocket would be, if anything. Some families pay nothing out of cost, out okay, of pocket. Great. So there's no guesswork to it at all. They can contact you guys. You'll find out what the cost is, and then they can make the decision whether this is something that they want to proceed with. <laughs> Right. And I should mention, too, um, I know a lot of children who have autism, um, really any person is uh, sometimes scared to have a blood draw. It's not really ideal. Nobody wants to do that. So Lineagen has actually done um, a lot of additional work to provide CMA on DNA that's collected from a cheek swab. So we can work with any family's uh, doctor. This does have to be ordered by a doctor, but we can work with the physicians, um, get a time set up for a cheek swab. Cheek swabs can even be done in your home and then sent to Lineagen for the CMA testing. Well, I'm very excited about this. I have to say to both of you, I think this is remarkable. And we've mentioned all this week that for for people who are in the Southern California area, that some of the Lineage and team is going to be here in-house on Tuesday night, and they can register to go to that event by going to centerforautism.com. But I'm imagining that there are people all over the world that are hearing this, Rena, and saying, okay, that's great. I'm not in Southern California, but I want to know more about this. I want to participate. What do they need to do? All they need to do is call 888-888-OPEN or 6736. We have a great customer service team who is going to be available to talk with you. We have three genetic counselors who can explain CMA in more detail to a family. Maybe a family has a child who has previous genetic testing. You know, all these different genetic tests, um, there are some other than CMA your child may still need CMA even if he or she has had previous genetic testing. Okay. So we have people on staff who are really excited to help you understand how this test could fit in with your family specifically. So just give us a call. And I guess I would be remiss if I didn't mention that you include with this counseling. You are the head of the genetic counseling, so we're not just given these facts and left 
on our own, you, you help us to understand what it means and what, what the next step would be. Absolutely. We, we really care about the families who are on the other side of this. And what that means is we're not going to just give you a result and let you figure it out yourself. We actually put a lot of time and effort into the reports we send each family. There are a lot of pictures that help explain the genetic variant. Um, we'll also set up a phone call with a genetic counselor before and after testing to go through your results. That's all inc included in the price that we bill the insurance company um, that's part of that process I explained to you earlier. Really remarkable. And I imagine as somebody who's at the cutting edge of autism research that this is a pretty exciting thing for you. It's very exciting, you know, and, and we really don't know what the future will bring, but um, <clears throat> we have reason to believe that eventually we're going to be able to, and this is kind of far in the future, but eventually we're going to be able to do a genetic test maybe at birth that predicts uh, to a very good degree uh, how likely it is that a child will develop an ASD. And if they are going to, uh, the genetic test will also eventually be able to tell us things like um, how likely is he to, to develop vocal speech? How likely is this child to need uh, extra visual supports during ABA programming? Um, who knows? You know, right. really, the potential is is wide open, and we don't know. We got to wait. You know, right. I'm a scientist, so I have to be skeptical and conservative. Right. Um, and it, it may be decades before we really have developed um, tests that uh, allow us to predict with that level of certainty. Um, but I, I, but it, 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 I, I'm quite sure, actually, that in the future, these um, more research in this area will allow us to be much more effective and to get started earlier. And when you can start earlier, there's always the possibility that you will prevent some of these kids from actually qualifying oh, for absolutely. a diagnosis. Absolutely. So we can get there ahead of it. That's right. Well, that's just, that's exciting, is what that is. <laughs> I agree. Uh, well, Rena, I thank you so much. Will you be one of the people coming here on Tuesday? I will. I'm very excited to um, come there and meet some of you guys and, and meet some families who are interested in this testing service. Well, we're thrilled that you're going to be here on Tuesday. I want to encourage people, if you can come to that event, to make sure you register because there are only a limited number of people that the space will hold. Go to centerforautism.com and register to come to the event. And I will look forward to seeing you when you're here on Tuesday. That sounds great. Thanks a lot for having me. I've been really excited to do this. Thank you so it's much. great chatting with you.